give us, we have an example here from the Daily Mail. This is from February. New York teacher manipulated fifth grade student into changing gender without parents' consent, which drove her to consider suicide lawsuit claims. The response you typically get from uh, people on the left is, it's an anecdote, it's one story, to That's, which my, my response is, then why not just when Ben Shapiro comes out and says this is bad, you go, you are so right, Ben Shapiro, I'm so sorry this happened. Instead, the response you get is dismissal, saying, no, you're wrong, no, this doesn't matter, which then you, you basically have overt support from the political left in this country of things like this when they dismiss or defend it. Okay, okay. Two questions, and I'm not even saying that I'm right on this. I want to know if the teacher was gay. <laughs> no. Like, they weren't. The t New York teacher that supported wasn't gay, right? The teacher was, according to the lawsuit and yes, photographs. They're not gay, I bet. Reading LGBT bo books to children and encouraging them to try being gay even if they were not. Okay, is the teacher gay? I don't believe the teacher is gay. I don't think so either, because no one actually gay would ever say that. Like no well, one. Well, to be fair, I, we don't know. We don't actually, and that was a complete kind of. She does have blue hair. That, that I know, right? And I'm so <laughs> sick of like, oh my god, if you have colored hair, you're gay. It's like I'm so sick of that, right? Um, but like that idea of like, I don't think actually LGBTQ is trying to indoctrinate anyone. I know that word gets tossed around, but like, we're not coming for your kids. Tr like, drag queens aren't coming for your kids. Drag queens aren't e trying to make your kids trans. Drag queens and trans people aren't even in the same freaking category. One's a performance and the other is a gender identity. Well, like, that, and, and not actually, no, no, right? But here, oh, sorry. You are correct. But yeah, now but like, you're seeing the, the, the blur and the blend where we actually had a debate between two drag queens and one of the drag queens says that they are trans. Which is so interesting to me there's no but rules like, there's no rules right but there's hear no me logic. out there are there is some logic that we can stick to right there's some logic that we could stick to logic that i have been canceled for before and i will be canceled again right uh blue blue self alligator alligator self i will call you whatever the hell you want i don't care right pronouns replace what if a white kid says they want to be called black okay great question fantastic question I will address the first point and then I will get to that point. And I love that question. Th that idea of I will call you whatever the heck you want, but a pronoun replaces a noun, right? Cat, cat self is not a pronoun. It doesn't replace a noun. It is a noun, right? So that's not a pronoun. Your pronouns are not cat, cat self. You may want to be called cat, cat self. And that's fine with me. I'll call you whatever the heck you want, but that's not a pronoun. So that's where I draw the line as an educator, right? Pronouns are he, him, they, them, it, it's like all of that stuff, right? And those should be valued, but I don't think we should also be like, well, I'm not going to call you cat. It's like, oh, what if they want to be called cat? Now, to that idea of like, race. What if, race, right? Such a good question. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, right? Now, here is where I differentiate the two. Being a gender studies major, right, which people have different ideas of, one of my biggest fascinations, both having my master's of science and t bachelor's in gender studies, is where is the line between a biological difference and a social difference between men and women on a biological level, right? Where is Where is the line? Right. Where do we go? Boys will be boys. And where do we go? Oh, that actually is just societally OK. And it, it has nothing to do with biology. So here's the thing. There are biological differences between men and women. Right. I was featured in like, what is a woman? And I was like, and I was like called out in that movie. And I never even got cut up for it. But like someone could ask me, like, what is a woman? It depends on the context you're asking me. Are you asking me in a scientific context? XX chromosome. Are you asking me in a social context? Self-identifying, like saying, um, oh, what is an athlete? Self-identifying. But here's where it gets tricky. We know that there are biological differences between men and women. For example, women, oxytocin, better at communicating, better kind of at empathy. We have the we have the chemicals to prove it. I have always identified with that ability, right? With that ability, I think it comes naturally to me. Hence the title non-binary, right? I identify with a biological trait that is usually kind of seen in women. Therefore, I call myself non-binary to help some people make that connection. Now, if you say, well, a white kid wants to be called black, what exactly are you identifying with that is black? Because by definition, if you think that black people act a certain way or do things in a certain way, that's racism. There's nothing different between white and black other than skin tone. There are biological differences between men and women. There are not biological differences between white and black other than melanin, right? That's why if a white kid said, I want to be black, I'd be like, what's your black experience that you're experiencing? If you, well, yes, tell. Well, I'll push back a little bit. Okay, there, I want to hear this. There are obvious biolog biological differences between white and black beyond just melanin. Okay, we've got some muscle but, differences, height differences, I got you, that's fair. Well, yeah, and, and I, don't, I don't think the color of the skin or the race, it matters that much, but obviously sickle cell affects the black population more so. Absolutely. But then the, the issue, uh, we've talked about this quite a bit. One of the arguments being made by uh, gender ideologues is that we used to have racial segregation in this country. Mm -hmm. And what was the argument for having black bathrooms and white bathrooms? There was a bit of a just moralistic 
I went a non-scientific view of mm -hmm. what was supposed to be. Right. But then there were also arguments presented by people who were trying to justify why we had racial segregation, saying things like the danger, you know, of black people are different in this way and that there's risks. But the reality is you get a black man from Somalia and a black man from Haiti, and they're very, very, very different. Very different. And then the only discernible characteristic is the color of their skin, which doesn't seem to actually help identify anything. Thank you. Exactly. Right. Like my black experience being kind of 51 percent Italian, but still identifying as black is very different than somebody else's black experience. So yeah. a thousand percent. I have nothing to push back against when it comes but to that because gender, yes. gender segregation. Yeah. Everywhere you go in the world, you yeah. find almost the exact same biological differences between men and women. OK, right. And that which is why which is why in, inherently if you find biological differences between men and women, but on the circumstances where you have somebody that is assigned male at birth that mm -hmm. identifies more with female traits or a female assigned at birth individual that kind of identifies more with male traits, we have a biological category, not utter chaos, that we can kind of make a distinction from. Oh, you are biologically this, but tend to have these characteristics, therefore trans, therefore non-binary. We don't have that with the black population. But, but if, if, when it comes to gender stuff, why why then surgery? If if gender is social, why do you need to medically or surgically affirm it? Do you want to take that one? Because that is such a good question. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, and I was gonna, I was gonna ask actually with regards to like sports and stuff. If if there's this known biological difference, which I believe there is, mm -hmm. you know, having having sports competitions be changed, or you know, the prison system and all of these right. different things. Well, that's like, but again, oh gosh, where do I even want to go with that? But like that idea of like the trans athlete in sport, I got to say, like, I'm so like sick of that one, right? Because it's like such a niche issue that like no one should really care about. And yet everyone cares about People's it so much. careers are being damaged. I, that's it. valid. That's yeah. valid. But it's such like a specific, <laughs> it's so specific to the point where it's like, oh, it's so constantly being blown out of proportion when I feel like there are larger issues. But that idea of like why surgery? Right. And it's very interesting to kind of look at the different kind of LGBTQIA perspectives, that idea of to be trans, you don't need affirming surgery, but that I same idea of it should be accessible and it should be. But what are the processes that we need to go through to make sure gender affirming care is beneficial? What guardrails do we need to put in play? I don't think banning it outright is a good situation. I don't think declaring, oh, and again, this kind of goes into uh, kind of reverse of your opinion, that idea of like, wait for them to go through puberty entirely, that could be really, really kind of mentally draining for um somebody who's trans, right? That needs there's, to go through a puberty. Yeah, tell there's me. There's no argument against, I, I do not believe yeah. that there is any any logical argument against what I said. If if desistance rates are study, right. studied found to be between 60 and 95%, yeah. then all you are doing by transitioning a minor is right. risking their suicide. Okay, so hear me out. Desistance rates, first of all, those studies are, have you seen those, dis, have you seen those studies? They're we, a we, mess. Like those, those are like the smallest sample sizes with the most isolated geographic locations that I have ever seen in study. Like those are ridiculously biased, I'm not saying you're wrong, because I can't, I can't prove otherwise, right? I, but I, I, my only response is, yeah. the left and the right both point to each other's studies and so say they're saying wrong. they're wrong. Absolutely, and a thousand percent, I could say like the left and the right, and I don't even. I know it sounds crazy because like the way I look and the way I talk, but like I don't even say if I'm on the left or right technically because I'm a teacher and I don't think I should bring a political opinion to the classroom. And since I'm a media figure, I don't think I should disseminate that information. But with that said, right, like that idea of like, okay, well, it's tricky. Okay, personal example, but but, but yeah. If, if, if the only data we have shows desistance rates to be this high, okay. there is no medical or scientific argument for transitioning minors. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. Okay, here's here's a question and I'll ask both of you this, right? Because as you know, right outside of San Francisco, very uh, progressive family, despite of course having the social <laughs> pressures of society. I did not start dance until the fourth grade because I thought dancing was for girls and I didn't want to do something that was for girls. I did every single sport. I tried to be a boy so hard. Right. And I and, you know, I had two moms and I got my nails painted and I went to preschool and oh, you're not allowed to wear pink nails. And I got them taken off. Right. I, I can't wear nail polish anymore, mom. But here's the deal. I did have progressive parents. I did start growing facial hair when I was like 12. Right. And that did not work for me. It did not work. I don't identify as trans. I identify as non-binary facial hair. You look great, by the way. Facial hair did not work for me. It did not work to the point where I could not shave. Like, and I know that sounds weird, but that idea of not only was facial hair wrong, but needing to deal with facial hair was inherently problematic. My mom had to shave for me. Yes, I just said that on the live podcast. You said you had two moms? I do. They were separated, right? And that's actually, and yeah, really good question that we can go into there because then a lot of people are like, well, they indoctrinated you. No, they didn't. Um, but like, here's the deal. That idea of 
hear me out. One actually had to shave for me because I was so against, I was so against shaving. And did I get laser hair removal on my face at the age of like 15, 16, a thousand percent. And did that make high school and college a lot easier for me? A thousand percent. And that's a medical intervention that I did at a very young age, but it worked for me. And I actually, in a way, it supports both of our arguments. Well, right? I don't think removing yeah. removing hair is comparable to sterilization. It, well, absolutely, right? Um, but in a way, it's p part of it is, but at the same time, not to the extremity. And I will respect that actual analysis that you just gave, right? But that idea of like, but it's crazy, right? It's crazy to me, like to kind of go back off that, like, oh, well, you had two moms, right? That idea of like, oh, people think that I was somehow indoctrinated by LGBTQ, that I was indoctrinated by you know, my mom's, but I was indoctrinated by the Bay Area. It's not the case. If anything, if you talk to any queer or trans person other than the people that desist, you got to remember those people. But a, the, a majority of us, we fought against feeling this way and acting this way for a very long time. Like we didn't just go like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of fun to wear pink eyeshadow every day. <laughs> that seems like a good idea. But that, that, yeah. that's, a, that's a social choice. That is a social make. choice, yeah. I mean, you don't but have to a, wear makeup. Right, but right, but it's a social choice that I had the right to make, right? Yeah. And and do we take that right away from kids? If if your son comes to you one day after you know getting one of these books, being like, oh, mom, I wanna try out eyeshadow. I think it'd be kind of interesting to experiment with that. My guess is you'd get, would, would there be a little bit of pushback from you there? And if so, why? I think, I mean, I I think, I mean, for me. Could this, he wear the eyeshadow? No, I'm not like, <laughs> No, no. Um, I, I really think with regards to these topics, with regards to all of this, um, we have a we have a situation where I do think there's um, a variety of conflicting worldviews, mm -hmm. but I don't think that comparing, I mean, for my part, I don't think there's any comparison of, uh, you know, facial hair removal to, I mean, I had only learned really probably a, maybe not even a year ago that the medications that are referred to as puberty blockers are oftentimes prostate cancer drugs. I didn't know that. Or used to chemically castrate sex offenders. Right. I didn't know that. And not only that, but the surgeries. So the surgeries like a, like a double mastectomy or some of these various surgeries have serious, serious consequences. Um, and, I, and I think that, you know, obviously the drugs do as well. These are things that are, are highly, highly concerning in regards to all of the side effects. And, you know, I, I think medicine, um, it really makes me wonder why. Why would they be doing it? But also, you know, just the overall health factor. You know, there was a whole movement that probably still exists where where people were saying that people shouldn't have the right to um, have their child, uh, their male child circumcised. And and that was because, again, it was a medical intervention. And and now today we're in this other place where, you know, a double mastectomy could be given to a 15 year old.